Zatas to Seth Tavadis, and welcome to my third part of Let's Play Empire Total War. For this part, I'm going to explain the agents of the game, uh, the generals, and also what you're going to need to do in your first turn to give you a little boost to help you get ahead of everybody else in the campaign map. So let's go into the agents you have. Um, you have these these guys. These guys are either gentlemen or scholars, <coughs> as they're known for across different races. You have missionaries, and then of course you have rakes, or in my case, thuggies. So let's briefly talk about each of them. The gentlemen are um, they're they're kind of new. They're kind of unique to Empire Total War. They're what what they can do is they can go around to other countries and other general and gentlemen and they can duel them and kill them or they can go to other people's schools and steal their technology or secondly they can go to your schools and help you research your technologies so that's initially what I'm going to do with this guy I'm just going to send him to my school he's going to help me research my uh, plug bayonets also um, as time goes on you're going to get more and more gentlemen and more and more scholars and you can stack as many of them as you want I believe so if there's a limit I haven't found it yet uh, onto each school so you can, can and then you can make sure the research you want to get done gets as done as fast as possible the more guys you stack onto these onto these schools secondly are your missionaries and they're not too important um, religion isn't as big a part <coughs> as it used to be in other uh, total war games but certainly what he does is obviously he converts people to your religion and if you send him into a territory that's what he's gonna start doing slowly so as you see I've just got this guy placed in an enemy territory converting them it doesn't do a whole lot but it'll certainly help you if you want to stabilize the region when you invade it <laughs> it'll help at least a little bit thirdly are your thuggies or rakes and these guys are your spies and assassins they can go around killing enemy generals enemy units and infiltrating enemy cities and sort of burn down farms and destroy infrastructure that sort of thing so I'm just I probably not going to use them a whole lot I'll rely a lot more on my military force than my spies and assassins in this game but I'm just going to send them over here and uh He's already spying on their city. I can see what their um, their happiness rate is and why. And I can uh, see what they have here, what their army here looks like, and um, the yeah, that's about it. So I can I can see it all. <coughs> and then of course there are your generals, and as opposed to other total war games you can just recruit generals from your army there's no like set pool of generals that collect in your city you can just you know, click a button and then he's in your army and uh, also on top of that you can recruit units to, to your generals so if you want I don't know let's say I want some Hindi musketeers in this uh, and some line infantry in this army you just click on it and within one turn it says all, they'll be built and then they'll all rally towards my general. It's made things a lot easier. So, that's uh, all for agents. But uh, next thing I want to talk about is how you can uh, get ahead of your opponents just in these initial parts of the game. And the best way to do that is to use what scarce technologies and scarce resources you have and use them to build up your economy to the best you possibly can. So as you can see here, I've got plenty of, of buildings uh, that I can upgrade. You can see that you can upgrade you can see that they, you can upgrade them when they have the uh, hammer and spade, I think that is, over top of them. And here I have, you know, a brandy house. It only increases happiness. It's not something I need right now. The guys in the city are, pl are plenty happy. This uh, slightly increases wealth, but not too much, and it enables recruiting more units. 
I got a pretty decent sized army. I won't recruit, worry about recruiting units now. Uh, here I've got uh, ability to uh, have, I don't have enough money for this, but that would be useful to build eventually, which uh, increases my tax income by 8%. Uh, the dancing school, which is more and more happiness. Um, I can build a Grand Admiralty, which helps me build fleets. I don't really need that right now. And, um, of course, Cannon Foundry. All stuff I don't really need at this point. I want to increase the amount of money I'm making. And right now, the only building I had that was able to do that was I was able to build a gem mine here. And uh, while it minorly decreases happiness, it gives me plus 2,000 wealth, which will definitely, definitely help me as time goes on. The other thing you should do as soon as you possibly can is get these guys out here. Uh, they're called Dows in my um, my country, but usually they're called Indian men. And uh, these are trading ships, and you send them to various trade theaters throughout the globe. And uh, these will give you plenty of money pretty quickly, so you're going to want to head there as fast as you possibly can in order to get the upper hand on your on your opponents. So I'm going to build uh, four of these and send them out and hope to god that uh, I can bypass any pirates that might attack me. So getting those guys out quickly will definitely help your cops in the future. Let's put tech talk about what technologies you'll need. I personally want to get my my uh, infantry as advanced as possible, as fast as possible, in order to be able to uh, crush my opponents in battle. Other people might disagree. They might want to bring up agriculture to get more money and more growth as fast as possible. I don't have a lot of agricultural buildings at the moment, so I'm not too worried about it. And as time goes on, you're probably going to find I've put a lot of time and a lot of resources into my uh, researching my infantry. Because then I can do more with less units and get more conquered faster, at least in my opinion. And that's another thing you're going to try and want to do at the beginning, and that is to conquer as many territories and expand as fast as you can. Because uh, most, most guys are usually pretty weak have weak frontier borders and uh, you don't want to give them the time to build up and the time to react to that and to make it harder for you in the future to be able to knock knock down their their provinces and so I've only got a little bit of money left and I'm just gonna use it to recruit some yeah it's just some line infantry I suppose and then color a game. Alright, there we go. So, I think that's about it. I think I'm gonna call it, call it in right about here. Uh, I believe we're a little bit under time, under t 10 minutes usually. But uh, I think that's all I'm gonna cover for right now. So, this is Joseph Vissorovic Stalin uh, signing off for now. And uh, you can come back for my next next the next let's play, where I'll be talking a little bit more. Uh, I'll go to turn two and I'll start uh, kicking some ass. And we'll get into uh, well, probably some more military strategy and uh, who knows? I guess we'll just see how the game unfolds from there. I mean, we'll conclude a little bit of diplomatic deals and whatnot, but I guess we'll find out. Anyway, see you guys later.